Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to our one of our, our final Wednesday evening Advent service in preparation for our celebration of Christmas. This uh, series of services that we've had have focused on God's amazing revelation in the book of the Psalms, a thousand years before the birth of Christ. The psalm writer added all of this information on the, the coming Savior. Before that, the promise was there of the Savior, but few of the details. We saw first that in Psalm 2 that he would be a mighty king. Uh, second, we saw that he would be the suffering servant, but he would be victorious and glorified. And this evening, we see him as the risen Savior, who grants fullness of life. We join in the opening hymn. Follow the order of service as found on the boards on the side or also in your service folder. The Lord Almighty reveal his Father, Son, and Holy Spirit grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. We make confession of our sins and find comfort in the Lord's assurance of forgiveness. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have our sin. So that you are proved right when you speak and justified when you judge. Cleanse me with yourself, and I will be redeemed. Wash me, and I will be white as Do not cast me from your presence, or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Upon this year confession, I by virtue of my office as a called servant of Christ, and by his command and authority, announce the grace of God upon you, and in the stead and by the, the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come. Take away the burden of our sins and make us ready for the celebration of your birth. May we receive you in joy and serve you always. May we find our life in you, both now and forever, in the perfection, the perfect joy of heaven. 
For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading. Our psalm reading for this evening that is a messianic psalm is speaking of the Savior who would come uh, is Psalm 16, written some thou a thousand years before he, he was born in Bethlehem. He speaks of confidence that the Lord, the Father, would keep him safe even though he would be crucified, dead, and buried. <laughs> and that he would not be abandoned to the grave. He will be raised to life and will enjoy eternal pleasure, body and soul, at the Father's right hand. This is Christ speaking, not David, as we will see explained in the book of Acts, those readings that are included here also. It also can be a prayer for us as Christians having a confidence that whatever we face, that the Lord will bring us safely through. And finally, even if we face death, our bodies will rest secure, that they will remain for the resurrection unto eternal life. Life after death was not a new revelation. Perhaps you maybe remember that Jesus said to the Sadducees, who thought that when you die, that's it. He said, doesn't it say in scripture, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And then he makes the point. He's not the God of the dead, but the living, that they still live on with the Lord. Also, the resurrection was not something totally new, for God's people. Job, who may very well have lived around the time of Abraham, uh, he would have those famous words that spoke about the resurrection of the Redeemer. I know that my Redeemer lives, and that he will stand upon the earth. And then also the resurrection of the body for us, as he would say there, that after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God, I will see him, and not another. But Psalm 16 puts it all together in the resurrection promise of the Messiah, the Savior, and then also his promise of resurrection for us. Tonight, Psalm 16, the risen Savior grants life to the full. There are two distinct parts to the psalm. The first four verses, which we will read, speak of his confidence and his willingness to do the work that the Father has for him to do. And then the blessing, the promise that he would not see decay, but that he would find his place in pleasant pastures and that the Lord would deliver him finally to the joy of heaven. Verses 1 through 4. Keep me safe, O God, for in you I take refuge. I said to the Lord, I am, you are my Lord. Apart from you I have no good thing. As for the saints who are in the land, they are the glorious ones in whom is all my delight. The sorrows of those will increase who run after other gods, I will not pour out their libations of blood or take up their names on my lips. And then the second part, uh, verses 5 through 11, speaks of him not being abandoned to the grave, but rather finding pleasant places that he would be brought to life. He would bring life and immortality to light through the gospel. Lord, you have assigned me my portion and my cup. You have made my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me 
Because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure because you will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the path of life. You have filled me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. The apostles in Acts chapter 2, the reading you have before you, explain what this all means. Some might have thought, well, this is just David, the psalmist, speaking about himself, but he explains that's not the case at all, that this is the Christ speaking because David's dead and buried, and he saw decay. But this was indeed the promised Christ who would be raised to life for our justification. Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did among you through him as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, him I saw the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will live in hope because you will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried and his tomb is here to this very day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured that out on as you now see and hear. I've also added a quote from John 10 that speaks of Jesus, his promise to give life and whole life. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep, and all who, ever come before me, all who ever came before me were thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Here ends our readings. We join in the hymn, hymn number 346, In You Is Glad.
fellow recipients of the abundant grace which our Savior has poured out on us, the many gifts. Get a life. Have you ever said it, heard it, or maybe thought it? Usually it may be a little bit sarcastic, and usually it's pointed at extremes, like the individual speeding on the belt line, weaving in and out of traffic, no regard for safety, only concerned about speed. Or maybe the coal worker that seems to live simply for the job and for making progress on the job. Or the 10-year-old that lives for the screen time 24-7. Our lives do require a certain amount of balancing, and God gives us appropriate times, time for work, time for school, time for friends, time for family, time for rest and recreation. And yet all of these things, if they are not revolving around the true message of Christmas, Today a Savior is born, he is Christ the Lord, will really end up with a no balance in life and will not be truly full lives. This evening we turn our attention again to the Savior who came in Bethlehem, promised by the Old Testament prophets, the one who would be victorious, and the Lord sends to us rather gently, get a life. He says, in Christ, live life to the full. Will your stocking be empty this year? Will there be no presents under the tree? Well, I'm sure that probably won't be the case. And yet, For many people, Christmas is a joyless time of year. It is hollow, it is empty. Old wounds are opened again. Conflict in family comes up again. Or it may be individuals who are alone in this supposedly most joyful time of the year. It means pressure to spend more than we can afford knowing that the bills will come due in January. And for many it means cold weather, which might be a challenge, wondering whether or not they'll have enough for heat and things to eat. But I can assure you that with all of these things going on, if there is not Christ in the individual's life, it will truly be empty. A little bit like the hole in the donut. Nothing of substance there. You see, the problem that is there lies deep within ourselves, and we see the evidence of sin that so often lays hold on our lives. We see especially the deception that is all around us from the father of lies, Satan, during this special time of the year. And the prophet Jeremiah, dealing with a rebellious people of his time, diagnosed that same problem. He said, their tongue is a deadly arrow. It speaks with deceit. With his mouth, he speaks cordially with his neighbor. But in his heart, he sets a trap. With smiling face, often pleading, ready to ring up the sail, spring the trap, And it's not just the 995 life insurance people that may use a bit of deception. It also touches us in our lives. Claiming that the job is done when it's not. Only remembering a little bit of the event because it helps in our argument when that event is called out as a play to be replayed again 
to see to be reviewed or pushing for the sale when perhaps we know that the individual really can't afford it. Peter describes us also, our natural condition, when he spoke to the people of his day. He says, you were redeemed from your empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers. An empty way of life, controlled by sin, driven by guilt. To an unbelieving world, perhaps on the outside looking like success, but still under the judgment of God. Do we truly appreciate how undeserving we are of the gift that God has for us, born in the manger in Bethlehem? But it is to sinners such as you and I that the Lord says, take heart, get a life, Yes, in Christ, live life to the full. Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. To a world that is floundering in guilt and hopelessness and despair, it should be like a life boy thrown out on the water to rescue, grace and gifts overflowing totally in Christ. Peter says it best when he says, you have been redeemed from that former way of life. You've been redeemed for something quite different. A life that is full and rich and truly blessed by the grace of God in your life. Here again, the closing words of Psalm 16 The Christ and Savior says, you have made known to me the path of life. The Father made known to the Son the path of life that he would take. It would start in the manger in Bethlehem. It would include 30 years of perfect obedience in a disobedient and rebellious world. It would mean three years of sharing the good news of the kingdom only to be rejected by most, and then the cross and the grave. But after that would come a clear declaration of his victory. That declaration that was there in his resurrection from the dead. And by that victory on the cross, he has won, he has opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You want a full life now? Find peace in Christ. Peace that is most important, not just in the family, but peace first of all with God. And Paul, writing to the Christians in Rome, says very clearly, you have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ went to the cross, suffered and died, and paid for our sins, and there is no doubt peace. And so we need no longer hold on to the baggage from the past, carry the guilt and the regrets that may be there that so often haunt us, the could of and should of in our life, but rather the Lord assures us that each day of our lives we start out fresh again. His mercies are new each morning. We have his forgiveness And we have the promise that he has work for us to do in our life now. Peace with God. When we have that peace, there's another blessing that comes forth, and that is joy. It's the same joy that was there on that first Christmas Eve, spoken of by the angels, demonstrated by the shepherds, the joy that was there for the wise men who had come and Anna and Simeon who would see the Savior and be filled with a joy, a joy that is ours. And to be able to say 
as Simeon did, my eyes have seen his salvation. A peace and a joy that helps us to rejoice with the blessings that we enjoy, but also a peace and joy that helps us to be strong and to rejoice even when we face difficulties in our lives because we know it's part of God's plan to get us from here and now to the joy of heaven. Now with that peace and joy, we also have a certain hope. And Peter speaks of that when he describes it as a living hope that we have through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You see, when a believer dies, their soul immediately goes to heaven. And yes, in death, our bodies will be subject to decay, but they will wait in the earth for that final day, the final resurrection. When God will raise us up again and give us new and glorious bodies, reunite body and soul. And we will be with the Lord forever in heaven. Eternal pleasures, as the Messiah spoke of at his right hand. I don't know if you have it yet, but if you don't, I would encourage you to get a life. Find that life in Jesus. Let him be the center of your life, and you will know day by day, even with the troubles that are there in life, the abundant grace and blessing that he showers upon his people. Yes, in Christ, live life to the full. Amen. We arise and continue with the singing of the responsive verse. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you all. Amen. We join in the closing hymn. You may be seated.